Let's go! Let's go! Y'all see it? Y'all see it? Y'all see it? Let's freaking go, dog! Y'all see it? Y'all see it, bro? We just caught the win. We just caught the win literally seconds ago. Like, I'm I'm setting up the phone recording this video right after we caught the dub. Alexa, what time is it? It's 12.14 a.m. 12.14 a.m. The game just ended like 11.45, 50-ish. And you see it's 12 o'clock in the morning. Couldn't waste no time, cause especially because I'm trying to edit this video. It had us up by like 7 o'clock in the morning or whatever. So it was already out. But let's talk about it for a second. I'm going to talk about the Eagles game, obviously. But let's talk about the title of this video, bro. No more games need to be played in Brazil. I'm going to try to slow down because I'm like, look, look at my face, but I'm literally sweating. That game, that game had me, well, like I said, like I said, we're going to talk about the game. We're going to talk about the game. But let's talk about Brazil. No more games need to be played in Brazil. And, you know, when I first found out that the Eagles was going to play in Brazil, first thing I said to myself was, this is about money. This is about money. Because, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they they got NFL games in Germany, London. Now we're going to South America. And I just remember seeing interviews on Instagram. Like, Darius Slate talking about, I don't understand why the NFL is going to send two NFL teams to a place where the crime rate is so high. I do not want to go to Brazil. You want to know why? I'm here to tell you why. They already told us not to leave the hotel. They told us we can't do too much going on because the crime rate is crazy. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, NFL, why y'all want to send us somewhere with the crime rate this high? And, and like, we got the country. So, you know, the first thing people think is, like, something terrible can possibly happen. I told my family, do not come down there because, like, I'm not going to be nowhere to be found. Really, I'm going to be in a hotel chilling, minding my business, playing my game. Like, it was an interview with A.G. Brown talking about how they went over the do's and don'ts of what to do in uh, Brazil. What were you told not to do? <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Um, honestly, things that we would normally do here, even simple as just walking down the street with your phone in and stuff like that, like, which is kind of crazy, so... So, like, it, it would seem a little crazy. Like, Big Play Slay, he said, I'm telling my people not to come or nothing. I'll probably just be in the hotel, eating hotel food, not going out. Like, this sounds more like a business trip, which it is. They're there to play football than an actual, like, experience. Not to say that they didn't have a good time, good experience. Because it seemed like they did. I seen some posts on Instagram. It was with the marching band getting jiggy turning up. Get to the main stuff game day bro let's talk about game day the first thing i saw after the eagles when they got on offense bro what was it like first play of the game saquon barkley slips he slips and then i think he slipped on the second play too bro bro if you're an eagles fan or even just a fan of football or even a chiefs fan y'all know what happened in super bowl 57 i don't even like to go there I didn't like to talk about that. I just like to leave that alone. I'm still recovering from that Super Bowl. I haven't even personally watched the highlights. And I'm sure there's Eagles fans who haven't watched those highlights either. Because that, that hurt. That hurts. That still hurts to this day. Because, all right. <sighs> We're not even going to go there. But I had instant PTSD Super Bowl 57, dog. I just remember how bad that feel was. Like, I don't think the Eagles recorded any sacks in that Super Bowl against Mahomes. Like, and we had the best defense, the most sacks and all that that year. And we didn't get a single sack. You had players slipping and all that. It was literally Super Bowl 57 all over again. So already from the jump, I'm like, oh, God, it's about to be one of those games. It's about to be one of those games. It's about to be one of those games. And that seemed to play a big role throughout the game for both sides of the team. Both sides of the team were struggling. I've seen plenty of Eagles slip offensively, defensively. Same with Green Bay. I've seen y'all slipping and sliding, too. 
So that was already a big down. But that just, you know what I'm saying? Like, that just goes to show that the football games need to be played in a football stadium. That was a soccer stadium. You know what I'm saying? They transformed it into a football stadium. That stadium that they made was made for soccer, not a football Americano. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's not what it was made for. Even though y'all transformed it, it's not what it's made for. And then when y'all go ahead and do all that spray paint, like spray paint the big old NFL logo, doing all this stuff, like the Super Bowl 57, spray painting the Super Bowl logo, all that, all that paint and stuff, all that stuff, like, that's in the field up. Like, dang. And it really take away from the game because it's like, you, you feel what I'm saying? You feel what I'm saying? But yeah. And I ain't really got too much to say. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, I'm trying to look at some positives. I'm sure most of those Eagles or Packers have never been to Brazil. So if you're with somebody who likes to travel, I'm sure it was a cool experience, you know, being somewhere different in the world, being the first team to win in South America, I believe. I don't think, I think this was always the first NFL game in South America. So yeah, there's that. What else? But yeah, basically just the field was horrible. Now let's talk about the refs. I almost forgot. Let's talk about the refs, y'all. Let's talk about the refs. Um, I've seen a couple of bad calls. I'm not even going front. Even on the Eagles, like calls that helped us. I've seen some bad calls. I'm not going to complain because you know what I'm saying. We trying to get the win, but like keep it in a hundred. Like it's some calls where it's like, really, like really. You know what I'm saying? But. What, what are we going to do about it? Sit there and holler at the TV? Yeah. <laughs> Next up, I just want to talk about the game itself. This was this was a good game, in my opinion. It was a good game. Now, if you watch my last video where I made predictions for the NFL games, I didn't think it was going to be this close. I knew the Eagles was going to win. I had my birds taking home the W. But I think I said 28 to 14. I think that's what I said. I don't know. I got to check. But I did not see it being, what was it, 34 29. This was a close game. This was a close game. I knew Green Bay was a good team, but I knew we were better. And I just, I didn't see, I didn't see this coming. I didn't see this coming. It was, it was crazy. And let's talk about the rough start for the Eagles. I think we came out, Hurst threw a fumble. Uh, I just said threw a fumble. Threw an interception the first drive, second drive, a miscommunication with a fumble. But the Philadelphia defense stood up big time. They stood up big time. They stood up big time. They stood up big time. Those two turnovers the Eagles had, the Packers only got six points off of that. Only six points. If Green Bay can cash in and get 14, a good team, not saying they're not a good team, but a good team is going, most likely going to score. Like the Chiefs, they're probably going to score. San Fran, they're probably going to score. The Eagles, they're probably going to score, you know? So if you go up 14 nothing. It's a total different ball game. It's a total different ball game. But because y'all only go up six points, if the Eagles score, well, right back in it. And we kick the PAT, now we got the lead. You know what I'm saying? So, like, Green Bay, that, that definitely some missed opportunities. I would definitely be heated. Besides that, I feel like it was a good game. It was a good game. I mean, I want to say, I want to say it was a fair game, you know, like offensively and defensively. On both sides of the ball, like I feel like the Eagles defense, they stepped up, made some plays, like I said. And Green Bay, they stepped up and made some plays. They uh picked off Hurts twice. The first pick, not even the first pick, I put both of those interceptions on Hurts. The interceptions weren't like the Eagles receivers got beat, head tapped, something like that. Nah. They were completely just bad balls by Jalen. Like the first interception, he tried to force it into like double coverage, undershot Devontae Smith. Looked like he was late on throwing it. Missed opportunity, you know what I'm saying? So, like, stuff like that. And then the second one, which was costly. The second interception he threw was very, very costly. Just get it off. Hurts, flushed. Hurts, directing traffic, looking end zone. Oh, it's picked off. Jair Alexander. Looking to take it out. Developing. Alexander trekked down by Smith. He didn't have a single interception in the regular season. Late in the game. And Saquon broke a big run that drive. I'm thinking, all right, if we get seven, that most likely put the game away. And as we get to the red zone, the drive starts to slow down. We start to hit a lump. So I'm, I'm thinking in my head, in which most people are probably thinking watching the game, all right, cool. All right, like I was saying before my phone died, most people were thinking, all right, cool. 
if the Eagles don't go, I forgot I had the Eagles interview. See, I told y'all, this was right after the game. This is live. This is live interview. Let's see what Sirianni's talking about. Tough-minded guys, and so it's not going to look pretty. Week one, it rarely looks pretty. Um, we've had some, some, uh, you know, thinking back. You know, I guess Atlanta was a, a good week one win in twenty-one, but twenty-two was hard at, at Detroit. Twenty-three was even harder at New England, and this one was hard too. Um, but we were able well, to. you see what he's talking about. Here. Oh yeah, that actually reminds me of something I want to talk about after I finish this conversation. So basically, I'm thinking, all right, cool. If the Eagles can't get seven right here. At least we take a field goal, we go up eight points. We go up eight points, that's still a good position to be in because not only does the opposing team have to score a touchdown, they got to get their two-point conversion. You see what I'm saying? So just putting your team in a success position to succeed, you know what I'm saying? And Hurts ends up throwing a costly interception right there, a costly interception because now they can go take the lead. So that was bad. Definitely some miscues. But at least I feel like that's something that's easy to correct, you know, like, it's just him trying to force it. Like, if it's not there, bro, which he started to do. i seen him do a decent amount of this game. Just throw it away. If it ain't there, throw it away. Throw it away. Just throw it away. You know what I'm saying? Live to fight another down. Take your points, whatever. You don't got to force it. I understand if the game is on the line, it's an all or nothing situation. Fourth quarter, you got to make something happen. I totally get that. Got to do what you got to do by any means necessary. But if you're in a position to win or even got the league like we were, just take your points. You know what I'm saying? Don't force it. Go down if you want to. Just whatever. Like, if you try to keep the clock going, running, just go down. Throw it away. Just be smart with the football, you know? I ain't going to bash my quarterback or anything because, of course, that's my quarterback. And besides the two turnovers, I think he played well. I think he played well. I, I'm really feeling Kellen Moore's offense. I'm really feeling Kellen Moore's offense, especially towards the end of the game, that fourth quarter drive where we chewed out most of the clock. Like, that was a great fourth quarter drive, like, the third down plays Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith came up big this game. I wonder how many yards he had. I might have to look it up. I'll probably pop it up on the screen. But Smitty, balled out. A.J. Brown, balled out. I believe he had like a 67-yard touchdown, over 100 yards on the day. And let's talk about the breakout, man. Saquon Barkley, dog. Saquon Barkley. And I think we all knew this was coming. I think we all knew this was coming. I think we all knew this was coming. We all know if Saquon Barkley's healthy, he's a dangerous man. Saquon Barkley is a dangerous man when healthy. And you know what my whole philosophy was? My whole, you know what I'm saying? It was, all right, if Saquon Barkley can be a superstar in New York with one of the worst O-lines, worst teams in the NFL, just imagine what he'll do with a team like Philly, who's been known to have a great offensive line, good offense and all that. That's a big difference from, like, 30th offensive line to, like, top five. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, if he's doing all this, just imagine what he'll do with Philly. And as you see, as he showcased tonight, three touchdowns, balled out. I think he had, like, a total of 132 yards. Had the touchdown catch, which was crazy. Good ball by Hurts. Had the, uh, like, was it, like, 12-yard rushing touchdown. Uh, got a goal line touchdown. Broke a couple big runs. Saquon Barkley, dog. Had a phenomenal first game. Phenomenal first game. And it's just it just gets me hyped for week two because we get to see it all over again. Get to see what we're doing. I'm, I'm really feeling the Eagles. I'm really feeling the direction we're heading into. I'm really feeling it. I'm really feeling it. I'm really feeling it, you know. But, yeah, that, other than that, I really don't got too much to say. That's kind of my whole thoughts on the game. And, of course, obviously, I'm happy because we got the win. That's most importantly, whether it's ugly, whether it's beautiful, dominant, whatever. As long as we get the win, that's most important, you know. Win by any means necessary. That's what the Eagles did. Went on down to South America. Took care of business. Want to know, baby? I think Atlanta's next. Atlanta. Y'all coming to Philly too, I believe? It's up there. 2 and no is underway. Mark my words. Well, Melly, out. Hey, what you doing? Lay you good? I'm in LA. Right, I'm good. Fuck up the streets. Your music is good. I fucked up the streets. I fucked up the streets and my music is out. I pop it with niggas cause niggas is brute. I'm bigger than niggas. I try not to clue. 